Hello, it's 9 p.m. in RTD. It's time to English New Edition for tonight. Headlines we have. The ceremony celebrating the 44th uh, anniversary of the creation of the Djibouti Armed Forces, uh, 6th June. For the international scene, Democratic Republic of Congo, 20 million needed for humanitarian assistance after eruptions of a Nyiragongo volcano. Welcome to our newsroom. The Prime Minister, His Excellency Abdul Qadir Kamil Mohammed, received this uh, morning, uh, Sunday, June 6, 2021, for a farewell visit the Chinese Ambassador of the People's Republic of China, Xiu Richang. The ambassador thanked the Prime Minister for his unfailing support throughout his tenures in Djibouti. For his part, the Prime Minister recalled that China remains a privileged partner for the Republic of Djibouti and thanked in his own name the ambassador of the People's Republic of China for his uh, accomplished missions. Uh, after the farewell visit, the Prime Minister decorated uh, the ambassador of the People's Republic of China with the officer of the National Order of 27 June in in recognition of his work. The farewell visit was attended by Ali Silai Abdallah, Chief of Staff of the Prime Minister's Office. The President of the National Assembly, His Excellency Muhammad Ali Hummad, received this Sunday, June 6, 2021, the farewell visit of the Ambassador of the People's Republic of China. Uh, to Djibouti, uh, Zhu Rui Chang. The meeting took place in the VIP lounge of the parliament. The meeting was attended by the consular of the Chinese embassy and the director of cabinet of the president of the National Assembly. Uh, the ambassador presented that to the president of the parliament his gratitude for the importance he has uh, given to the development uh, and consolidation of sino djiboutian relations. Uh, during this meeting, the hosts of the day said, we quoted, during the last three years, our two countries have uh, celebrated the 40th anniversary of their diplomatic relations. Uh, the head of state of our, our two countries sent each other a message of congratulations, uh, inaugurating a new starting point for our bilateral relations. Uh, in recent years, our two countries have seen their mutual political trust steadily uh, consolidate and have always uh, provided each other with understanding and support of on issue affecting vital interests and uh, major concern of both sides uh, have created a win-win model of cooperation between countries of different sizes. It was uh, the 44th uh, anniversary of the Djiboutian Armed Forces. Uh, a ceremony rich in color and emotion where the national flag flew at the entrance of the Camp Sheikh Osman, located in the town of Balbala. As in its customary, this ceremony was held at first light. This 44th anniversary is placed under the edges of the defense of the Minister of Defense in charge of relations with Parliament, uh, Hassan Umar Mohammed Burhan, and due to health constraints related to the COVID-19 pandemic, the ceremony was uh, characterized by a symbolic taking up of army with the tightening devices uh, that replaces uh, the traditional military parade uh, ceremony of uh, June 6. Uh, on his arrival, the Minister of uh, Defense was uh, welcomed by the Chief of the General Staff of the Army Forces, General Zakaria Sheikh Ibrahim. The Minister of Defense, uh, Hassan Umar Mohammed Burhan, saluted the flag and then reviewed with the troops uh, this event, reaching emotion, resounded with patriotic resonance, reminding each citizen of the sense of uh, duty, honors, and sacrifices in all circumstances uh, of uh, soldiers. Uh, this soldier, who is uh, the pride of his country, thus uh, 
contribute in, uh, to its uh, greatness. Uh, the ceremony was also attended by the commander of the Republican Guard, the commander of the Coast Guard, the director, the director general of the National Police, uh, the chief of the staff of the National Gendarmerie, the director of the Civil Protection, and uh, the director general of the Penitentiary. The ceremony was attended by senior officials of the Djiboutian Armed Forces. The ceremony was placed under the orders of uh, Colonel Daher Hassan Abadid, head of the Armored Regiment.
the chief of staff of the general staff of the armed forces then read out the agenda of the 6th June on behalf of General Zakaria Sheikh Ibrahim. In his speech, he paid tribute to all the men who make up the Egyptian armed forces. Listen to him, please. La commémoration annuelle du 6 juin est pour nous un moment privilégié. The annual commemoration of 6 June is for us a privileged moment to pay homage to our mitres who sacrificed their life for the defense of the country. We express our sympathy and cooperation to their families and loved ones and assure them of our full support. We pray to Allah to grant them mercy and to welcome them into his internal paradise because of the COVID-19, which continues to this day. This year, we are also celebrating the anniversary of our armed forces with a reduced force. Therefore, we urge everyone to seriously observe the barrier measures related to this pandemic. We pray to the Almighty to keep us, our people, and the whole world safe from this pandemic and to eradicate it for good. Officers, non-commissioned officers, and enlisted personnel, the anniversary of 6 June is usually an opportunity to take stock of our actions over the past year and to define the perspectives in order to achieve our objectives. First of all, I have a special thought for all our soldiers deployed along our borders who are resolutely defending the territorial integrity of our country. Proud of the exemplary commitment and the high sense of duty of these two regiments, the military high command sends them its warmest congratulations. We also pay tribute to our non-commissioned officers deployed far from their families in Somalia within the framework of AMISOM. The contact continues to courageously carry out the responsibility in the sectors and in part of the Galamudu sectors. It is a difficult mission, but a crucial one, because I repeat, by fighting terrorism in Somalia, our fighters are not at risk of spreading in our sub-region by the grace of Allah and thanks to the unity of the Djiboutian people, but also thanks to the enlightened policy of His Excellency, the President of the Republic, our dear country will remain a model of stability and peace in our region. I take this opportunity to express on your behalf and on my own our warm congratulations and admiration to Mr. Ismail Umar Gilly, President of the Republic, Head of Government and Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, for his victory in the presidential elections of 9th April 2021. We reaffirm to him our firm determination and maintain and strengthen our efforts to defend the integrity and sovereignty of our country. We also pay great tribute to the entire Djiboutian population for its commitment and its total attachment to the stability of our country. Strained by national unity, our country is now enjoying promising economic development, ensuring a better future for future generations. This is why it is essential that we work together to preserve and consolidate our unity and social cohesion, whatever the cost and sacrifice. I take this opportunity to express my gratitude to all the country's security forces, constantly mobilized to ensure the security and protection of our citizens. This is also the moment for me to express my warm thanks to the civilian personnel of the armed forces for the tireless work they carry out with dedication in the service of the country. In, in this speech, uh, General Zakaria Sheikh Ibrahim recalled the great achievements of the armed forces during their 44 years of existence. Uh, he wished the Republic peace and prosperity and urged the, the armed forces to work in unity. This one once again to the head of the cabinet of the CMGA. Officiers, sous-officiers et hommes de troupes, afin d'atteindre les objectifs fixés dans le cadre de la réforme de notre armée, L'axe d'effort au cours de cette année a été mis sur la valorisation de nos ressources humaines. Officers, non-commissioned officers and men of the troops. In order to achieve the objectives set within the framework of the reform of our army, the focus of effort during this year was on the development of our human resources. We have refugialized the two offices, the training office and the recruitment office, which are essential for the personal management process and the programming of training. It is also worth mentioning the recruitment this year of 1,200 young people with a level of 90 or more years of schooling, which will significantly increase the operational potential of our forces. However, this reinforcement must go hand in hand with appropriate training programs. This also requires us to develop an exercise program to consolidate the operational skills of our units in all areas in the area of health. On behalf of the Djiboutian government, I would like to congratulate the leaders and executives of the Armed Forces Health Service for their sacrifice and their strong involvement in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic, which has hit our country like other countries in the world. Your professionalism, your determination, and your unfailing cooperation with the Ministry of Health from the very beginning of this pandemic have helped us to stop its spread in the country. You have shown a great capacity to adapt a strong cohesion that has done credit to our armed forces. 
Officers, non-commissioned officers, soldiers in the ranks, the work of building new infrastructures or renovating existing ones is continuing with satisfaction, according to the program established to improve the living and working environment of our troops. The construction of the first phase of 500 social housing units in Balbala South for the benefit of our troops will be soon completed. The activists have been giving to Alex Reed the connection of those housing units to water and electricity. This project is part of the policy of housing for all. An native of the President of the Republic, also among the works carried out this year is the project that has been close to our hearts for several years. This includes the integration in April 2021 by the Minister of Defense of the Textile Manufacture Workshop with the Master Tailor in charge. Our objective is to gradually achieve autonomy in the clothing of our soldiers. I would like to congratulate the head of department and his staff of the excellent work accomplished in the construction of the R plus one buildings at Sheikh Usman for female army personnel in the two hangars at Ali Rune for the storage and maintenance of the rapid intervention battalion vehicles, not to mention the total reablation of the Galafi border post in terms of communication. Remarkable work has been accomplished in the reignition of the military, telephone networks and the implementation of a secure video conferencing system that has enabled us to continue our working meetings during the period of confinement. However, in order to improve the communications tools, the conference must, as soon as possible, concentrate its efforts on upgrading defense radio network as part of the reinforcement of our operational potential. The French Navy has acquired the necessary means to carry out the state's missions at sea and to defend our country's strategic interests. Strategic. After the speech, the Minister of Defense, Hassan Omar Mohammed Burhan, accompanied by General Zakaria and the senior officers of the Armed Forces, paid their respect at the tomb of the fathers of the nation, the late Al Hajj Hassan Guled Abtidon, imploring the Most High to have this late man in his holy mercy. After the Fatiha, the Minister of Defense, in charge of relations with the Parliament, Hassan Omar Mohammed, went to the steel symbolizing the monuments of the martyrs, uh, the lay of a wreath of flowers uh, in tribute of the martyrs of the Jewish and armed forces who fell in the file of honor for the defense of the homeland and peace in the world. This ceremony full of fervors ended with the traditional family photo. عذاب القبر ومن فترة النار اللهم لا تحرمنا أجره ولا تفتنا بعده واغفر اللهم لنا وله ولجميع أموات المسلمين الفاتحة له ولا تحسبن الذين قتلوا في سبيل الله أمواتا بل أحياء عند ربهم يرزقون فرحين بما آتاهم الله من فضله ويستبشرون بالذين لم يلحقوا بهم من خلفهم ألا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون 
صدق الله العظيم بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله اللهم اغفر لأمواتنا وأموات المسلمين اللهم اغفر لشهدائنا وشهداء المسلمين اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم وعافهم وعف عنهم وأكرم نزلهم ووسع مدخلهم واغسلهم بالماء والثلج والبرد ونقهم من الذنوب والخطايا كما ينقى الثوب الأبيض من الدنس اللهم وأبدل دارا خيرا من دارهم وأهلا خيرا من أهلهم وزوجا خيرا من زوجهم وأدخلهم الجنة وأعذهم من عذاب القبر اللهم لا تحرمنا أجرهم ولا تفتنا بعدهم واغفر اللهم لنا ولهم ولجميع أموات المسلمين الفاتحة لهم The Minister of Economy and Finance, Ilyas Musa Dawale, visited the Development Fund today in the late morning. This working visit, which is part of his Tower of Public Structures under his supervision, began with a visit to the premises followed by a presentation and discussions on the missions project and prospects of the Development Fund. At the end of these uh, fruitful exchanges, the Minister praised the, the work accomplished and congratulated the Director General and Coordinator and his team for the important achievement aimed at guaranteeing better inclusion and access to universal services for all. He also asked the Director and his staff to redouble their effort in order to fulfill their missions. Uh, it should be noted that uh, the Economic Development Fund, known as FDED, is a development financing institution. This uh, institution offers uh, its clients uh, new services, mainly focused on uh, coaching and on the elaboration of technical economic financial studies uh, for a better management of uh, entrepreneurship projects. For his part, the Minister of uh, Finance, speaking to the press, stressed the importance of uh, this uh, institution. Uh, he highlighted the key words of this uh, meeting, rigor, dynamism, and teamwork. He urged the general managers and his team uh, to work hard in order to provide an exemplary work. He said that this uh, institution uh, plays a leading role in the economic growth of the country and continue to do so. The Minister of Health, Dr. Ahmed Roble, invited all uh, pri private uh, pharmacists uh, to a first contact meeting to discuss ways and means of solving the problem is related to the proper functioning of private pharmacies. Uh, in his speech, the Minister of Health thanked uh, uh, the pharmacist for their presence at uh, this first meeting to restore existing deficiencies uh, such as uh, untimely drug shortages, uh, prices disparity, but also the quality and traceability of pharmaceutical products. Uh, with the adoption and implementation of a new regulation that is both flexible and dynamic. The Minister of Health called for joint coordination consultation in order to, in order to find lasting solutions to the shortcomings and to establish a qualitative uh, at the fundamental reform to improve the availability and supply of quality medicines in Djibouti. The private pharmacist welcomed this unique and unprecedented initiative to have been invited for the very first time by the Department of Health. The stakeholders of this uh, meeting mentioned the several difficulties that will uh, have to be solved with the, within the framework of the per permanent and sustainable dialogue in order to start this new pharmaceutical reform. The Minister of Health, Dr. Ahmed Roble, who addressed the private pharmacist in this term is the, pharmacy, the Minister of Health. Dr. Ahmed Roble has requested that the establishment of a technical committee that will be responsible for the implementation and monitoring of this pharmaceutical reform, which is essential for the improvement of our health system. 
the first test for the 2021 baccalaureate in the general education uh, streams uh, began today, Sunday, at 6th June 2021, and will continue through the weeks uh, this year's more than uh, 11,500 uh, candidates uh, for all the streams uh, are sitting the tests in more than 11 examination centers. Uh, the four high school in the capital, high school of uh, state uh, Gabot, Hodan, and Balbala, and three centers housed within the University of Djibouti, as well as uh, the Industrial and Commercial High School, hosted the tests of the General and Vocational Baccalaureate. It should be said that MENFOB has put in place special mechanisms to ensure the smooth running of the exams. Teacher and administrative staffs have been mobilized to ensure optimal supervision and operation of the examination centers. Uh, in addition to this, uh, the respect of the barrier register is, is uh, scrupulously observed. Uh, in this regard, the examination paper were sent under good police escort thanks to the mobilizations of the vehicle of the National Gendarmerie, which ensured the security and confidentiality of the batch of envelopes that were handed over and the seat to the different heads of examination center and the supervisions of the president of the examination board. As usual, the Minister of Education and Vocational Training, Mustafa Mohammed Mahmoud, has made a tower of inspection to ensure the smooth runnings of the tests. Uh, the delegation led by the ministers went uh, successively to the State High School of Djibouti, then to the High School of Gabod, finally to the University of Djibouti, before stopping uh, last time at the High School of uh, Hodan IV. The minister was accompanied by a strong delegation composed of the highest officials of his department, as well as his close collaborators. This was an opportunity for the ministerial delegation to appreciate the consequent and adequate ar arrangement put in place to allow candidates to take the tests in the best material and human conditions. Uh, at the end of uh, his tower, the minister said he was uh, satisfied with the smooth running of the tests. Uh, after discussions with the heads of the center and the president of the jury, the minister paid a tribute to the mobilization of the personnel involved. The Djibouti Railway Company organized this morning a symbolic farewell ceremony in honor of an experienced engineer named Mr. Fasil Waldemiriam uh, of Ethiopian nationality who served the national company and played a leading role in the realizations of the new railway project between Djibouti and Ethiopia. Mr. Fasil is a former regional director of the former Djibouti Ethiopian Railway, CDE, who has spent his entire career in the rail business. Uh, in 2014, uh, the Djibouti Railway Company called on him to monitor and control the new railway project. This uh, engineer was appointed as f a few weeks ago as a director of the NOC Company in Djibouti. The ceremony was attended by the Minister of uh, Infrastructure and Equipment, Hassan Hamad Arbahim, the Minister of Economy, Idias uh, Musa Dawale, and the Director of the Djibouti Railway Company, Mahmoud Rabi Dabar, as well as the Member of the Parliament, senior officials from the National uh, Railway Company and the CCECC and Ethio Djibouti Railway Companies and representative of the two ministers. For his part, the Minister of uh, Infrastructure and Equipment, uh, Hassan Hummad Arbahim, has warmly thanked the engineer Fasil and all the partners who have combined their effort to achieve this beautiful infrastructure within the deadline. The Minister has also wished him a good continuation of his new responsibilities. The Minister of Environment and Sustainable Development has uh, the habit of organizing the World Environment Day every year so on 5 June for the year 2021. This day was celebrated in the region of Tajora and particularly in Raisali, which is a marine protected area 
on this occasion an important delegation led by His Excellency Mohammed Abdul Qadir Musa, Helen, Minister of Environment and Sustainable Development, accompanied by his closest uh, collaborator, went to the region of Tajura in Rais Ali to celebrate this World Environment Day 2021. The Prefect of the region, Hassan Dabali Ahmed, the President of the Regional Council, and the parliamentarian of the region, the resident coordinator of the United Nations system, Barbara Manzi, the deputy representative, uh, the deputy resident representative of the UNDP, as well as uh, the community of uh, Raisali, also took part in this important day of uh, awareness and action. The large delegation led by the Ministry of Environment and Sustainable Development was welcomed at the Rice Ali site by the local community. This day of uh, commemoration of uh, the World Environment uh, Day was marked by several events. The representative of the, U of the, UNDP, of the UNDP thanked uh, the, the representative of the United Nations System, Mr. Barbara Manzi, thanked the Ministry of Environment and Sustainable Development for the actions uh, undertaken in the file of environmental preservation and underlined the importance of this World Environment Day, which is of primary importance to raise awareness among the public, uh, public institutions and private sectors of the needs to preserve our national heritage. The Minister of uh, Environment, uh, Mohammed Abdul Qadir uh, Musa Halem, uh, in his speech underlined uh, the importance of this day, which is uh, celebrated all over the world of, on uh, 5 June every year, and also recalled uh, the effort that, the, that uh, his ministry has undertaken to preserve the environment in general and restore the Rice Ali ecosystem in particular. He mentioned that uh, more than 25,000 mangroves have been uh, planted in Rice Ali. He also recalled that these uh, planting activities will restore the local ecosystem, provided basic ecosystem services uh, without forgetting the creation of uh, generative uh, activity. For the international scene uh, in Democratic Republic of Congo, 20 million needed for humanitarian assistance after a uh, near Congo volcano erupts. Uh, the UN's deputy humanitarian chief uh, in the Democratic Republic of Congo said, said that uh, 20 million dollars uh, is needed uh, in general for all the needs after the eruptions of the near Congo volcano on the night of 22-23 May north of the city of Goma, in this east of the country. These funds should support displaced people where they are today, support for returns and support for people who have lost everything because of the lava flow is about 20,000 people, health centers and schools destroyed, said the UN Deputy Humanitarian Coordinator in Democratic Republic of Congo. The lava flow killed around 30 people and caused massive displacement. More than 400,000 people have been displaced by the eruptions of the Uragongo volcano, according to the United Nations. Uh, this is it uh, for the news. Thanks for watching us. Uh, have a good evening.